Hello everyone, welcome to the channel and as promised, here is the build breakdown video for my Antweight Hammer Spinner Overdraft. This is version two. If you wanna see the version one video, I'll put a link for that down below to the original build, but this was the complete rebuild that I built for Clash of the Bots 2023, which was last weekend as of filming this video. Um, so I've already competed with it. I already know what worked and what didn't. And I'm gonna kinda go through a little bit of that and I will have the full event report video out pretty soon. Feel free to jump around to anything that you find interesting about the design, but I'm just gonna take it apart and show you guys what I was thinking when I built this robot. So here's the top plate, um, pretty simple. Four screws hold it in, uh, I'll just take that out so we can kinda see the whole thing a little bit better. By the way, all the screws I'm using for this design are number four wood screws, just from like Home Depot. They actually worked very well. I was pretty happy with these. Um, I was using machine screws in the last version, but I figured that these would screw better into the TPU and they actually ended up holding pretty well. Lighter and cheaper than the machine screws I was using. And they have a larger thread, so they threaded and held in the TPU a lot better. All right, so here's the top plate made out of 6061 aluminum, along with most of the metal parts on this robot are made out of this material. So this is just one millimeter thick, and it goes on to cover the electronics. Um, before I get into the electronics, I'm going to talk a little bit about the shuffling mechanism, which was newly designed for this robot. And the biggest thing that I wanted to focus on in this design was um, removing all the bearings out of it. So in the original design, I had eight bearings on each drive side. So 16 bearings in total that added a lot of weight and a lot of unnecessary size to the shuffling mechanism. And I kind of figured out very quickly that they were not necessary at all. So this whole mechanism is pretty simple because it is able to be quickly removed um, and repaired if needed by taking off these four screws, holding on uh, the shuffler cover, I call it. It's just the little retainer piece that holds on shuffler, entire shuffler mechanism. So this is what that looks like. Um, here's the frame piece and literally this just goes like that and two screws hold it in place, screwing through the aluminum part and back into the TPU. It has two holes for the ends of the cams to rotate in. Um, and like I said, TPU, so it's able to take some pretty good hits without really getting damaged, like as you can see here. All right, so we have the entire shuffling side here that just pulls right out like that. Same as the old version, I'm using the same exact gear setup. Um, it has a gear mounted on the drive motor right here. And the drive motor for this is, if I can find a piece here, uh, that's the, frame piece right there. That's what it looks like. Just the two holes for the gears, ends of the gears to rotate in, and the motor mounts right in there. Shaft comes out, gear mounts on there, and then you have the entire shuffling uh, drive side assembly right here. There's a square shaft that goes through the PLA gear and into this, which is the TPU uh, cam assembly, so that's just a one piece of all the cams. And then the feet look like this, and they just slide on over there. And I'm able to bend the feet because this is TPU, so I can squeeze it over the cams. And then when it's all put together, it looks like that. So this whole assembly is way, way lighter than the old one with all the bearings. Got pretty dirty, as you can see. But that allowed me to save a ton of weight. It's also much smaller in size because the bearings aren't there. 
and a lot more durable. So I was pretty happy with how this held up in the competition. The drive was really good the entire event. Uh, one important thing here is all the tolerances are just very loose on this to make sure nothing binds up. The side rails, I'll go ahead and show you those quick. 6061 aluminum as well, three millimeters thick. They just look like that. And they're bolted together by these three uh, TPU frame members right here. And I'll show you the bottom plate quick it is also two millimeter 6061 aluminum that goes right on there. Um, I want to use a lot more aluminum in this design because I had to wait for it with making the whole robot smaller, taking up the bearings, all that stuff. And I wanted this robot to be more durable. So as you can see, it got a few chunks taken out of it, but it worked pretty well. Um, one of the only issues I had with the aluminum that's kind of making me question whether it was the best idea is I had the shuffler on and I was in a rumble. This didn't happen during the tournament, but I was in a rumble and I got hit by a horizontal right there and it bent this piece in and it crushed the the shuffler pod and that caused the whole side to jam up. So nothing got damaged in this besides that being bent. I was able to just unbend it after the fight and it worked perfectly fine. But since it jammed into the, the shuffling mechanism, that whole side lost drive. So I'm thinking I had, before I had the uh, thicker polycarbonate side frame rails and I'm thinking that might actually be a better move because they won't really jam like that. So a little bit about the weapon. So how this works is the servo goes in here. So really annoying story that caused me a lot of problems during the tournament. I have these Corona servos um, that are pretty small. They're about 4.7 kilograms per centimeter so a good amount of torque and that just goes right on in there and sticks out in the middle there and these actually I in testing I don't know what happened I didn't overvolt them or anything but they both burned out so I ended up taking all the the potentiometer and everything out and just using it as a motor with a speed controller and that was very suboptimal and that caused some problems uh, in the event um, Honestly, not really because they were, I was using them as gear motors, but because of the control setup on my transmitter, the, the channel stick that I was using to, to move the arm was sticking on the remote, like it wouldn't return to center properly sometimes, or it wouldn't give me full range of motion, so it was being very slow or not really working properly. This is offset to the side, and that's just to save space, and so I have place to fit all the electronics in and can make this as narrow as possible. Um, so how this works is there's one bolt. This is a, I believe a quarter inch bolt that just goes through, through uh, the hub and both uprights and is secured right there by that nut that comes out. and the whole arm just pops out like this. So this is the new hub design I came up with to kind of hopefully provide some shock absorption and uh, make it really easy to mount the arm. So how this works is TP or 3D printed uh, PLA part right here. Ideally it would not be PLA, but it worked. And then that screws into this TPU hub that works just like that has a slot for the arm to go in and a hole for the bolt to go through this way. And that has these little shock mounted pieces right here so it can have some shock absorption and then provide the width it needs to go across the whole, the span of this right here. Um, the good thing about this is it's super easy to swap out. You just pull it off like that and you can switch out your weapon which has the little bolt hole right there which lines up through there and that allows the bolt to just slide through and that secures 
the arm into the hub. So this, I was really happy with how this actually ended up working um, in the event. That just drops in there. There's the gear on the servo right there. So that just goes down and meshes into there. Uh, and that's how it drives the arm. A little bit about the arm itself. I went with this new design which has a forward sweep on it. So it can go down and hit below the main body of the robot. Um, that proved to be a little bit of a problem. This right here started bending because of this little relief or this little weight saving hole right here. So I probably should have just left this whole thing solid, but yeah. The weapon motor mounts just like that. And what proved to be a very big problem during this event is the shaft comes out and there's a thread on this so it was very easy to just mount that there. And then I'm using the same weapon disc I used in the last event. Just this asymmetrical weapon disc. It would go right on there and bolt on. And it worked perfectly fine the entirety of the last event that I brought Overdrive V1 to and this was the exact same kind of setup. But for some reason in this event, uh, well, I'm surprised it didn't happen last event, but it happened this event where this shaft just broke off. It's hollow and it's aluminum. I did not know it was hollow originally. So that was a huge weak spot. And uh, this happened twice, once in the tournament and once in the rumble where the weapon disc just completely came off, which is obviously a huge problem. And if I decide to rebuild this, I'm definitely gonna have to change the weapon hub. I'm using this dual ESC from AliExpress that has built-in mixing. Um, it worked pretty well, except for one fight. I got hit and like pretty hard by horizontal. And I didn't take any damage besides the ESC locked into, re into reverse. So it was just driving me backwards and I was driving into the wall and I got knocked out with everything still working, but my drive was just pushing me into the wall. So after that, I turned the robot on and off and it worked perfectly fine. So I have no idea what happened. And I went the rest of the event, did a few rumbles where I took some big hits and that problem never came back again and it worked perfectly for the rest of the event. So I really don't know like what went on there. That's kind of what you get, or what I get for using these cheap ESCs, but uh, it was a risk I was willing to take and it ended up costing me a fight. But I thought it was weird I couldn't get the issue to repeat itself. So I'm gonna keep using this ESC because it's a super good product for $4. And I was really happy with how it was working besides that. So maybe it was a one-off issue, I don't really know. I'm gonna keep using it and seeing what happens. Uh, driving the servo, I have a single channel brushless or brushed ESC with a buck converter running at six volts going to that ESC so I don't burn out the servo motor. And then the receiver is a FlySky FS2A, uh, one of the micro receivers, which definitely helped save me a lot of space. And then I have my 20 amp brush, brushless weapon ESC right there. Other than that, uh, a little bit about the attachments. Uh, how these work is there's these two bolt holes right there. Here's the mount. Um, so there's a bolt right there, goes through, nut goes on end here, and that provides most of the, the holding power for this. And then the two screws that go through here into these frame members just go come out and go through this attachment as well. This is the shock mount for the horizontal attachment, which I just made this uh, laser cut AR500, three millimeter thick, flat kind of shield. It stayed very securely on the robot. Obviously the only problem is these screws were getting sheared off, so that could probably eventually present an issue. Other than that, I have another attachment, which is kind of the, just a wedgelet rack. It has three spots to mount the wedgelets and I have all kinds of different options. Uh, these big 
thick one piece long wedgelets, the smaller uh, thinner wedgelets, and then these longer wedgelets. They're also of the thinner variety and they can all just mount on here in whatever configuration I want and that just bolts on to the front. So this is the old frame of overdraft and as you can see this is a lot smaller, it's a lot more narrow and a lot, a lot smaller in this direction as well and that provided a lot of weight saving. Unfortunately this design did worse than the old one but I do think with some minor changes it could do fairly well and I do think it has a lot more potential than the old design and um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out but at this point I am kind of thinking about moving away from the hammer saw configuration because that just it's so much to think about during the fight. You have to think about firing the arm, spinning up the weapon, driving, all that. That when it's not all working properly, it kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit. And I am thinking about just making this into a big vertical spinner, like kind of like a deep six size spinner. I'm kind of thinking about doing that. Um, I may just improve it as is. I don't really know yet. Um, kind of a disappointing event that's making me kind of rethink the entire concept of the hammer spinner. Um, on the other hand though, the shuffling pods work amazing. I'm going to definitely use these with whatever I do next with this robot. Uh, I do think I'm going to change the motors out into some 1000 RPM 6 volt which allow me to overvolt them on 3S to get more speed hopefully out of the design. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and ask me, and I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Um, other than that, just be on the lookout for the event report, and I will see you guys next time on Robot Fight Club.